Hi, I'm Mark Dice, and welcome to an all-new Let's Play. Let's see what this is. Um. Okay. Oh, God. Crappy mouse controls. Uh-oh. Hyperlink? Is that, is that all this is? U.S. government? Like U.S. government does not have any sub-headlines. Let's look at geolo geology and biology. Geological time scale. Archon. Yeah, they look all kosher. Although I thought this was... No. This one was... Oh, it is protoz... No, I thought it was protozoic. Or protozoic. I don't remember. Let's let's look right here. Let's see what it says. Well, crocodiles were around well before that. We know that. Yeah, we know that. I actually watched a thing about how uh, dinosaurs were all a mistake and they never should have happened. It's pretty interesting. How if it wasn't for certain events, uh it wouldn't have, uh, dinosaurs wouldn't have been around because placental mammals technically would have taken the earth, but because of a few missteps, um, we had to scurry around as rats for a few million years until we could actually get our stranglehold. And as some people believe the meteorite, however, I tend to believe that something else happened because there's just too much evidence in the contrary. <clears throat> Um, yeah, yeah, roses are new, but, uh, yeah, Aglia scene was great. That's pretty much everything is pretty much the same as it is today, except for a few exceptions like woolly rhinos and a few other things. I could go on and on about this kind of stuff. Dolphins were, or actually seals were technically around longer. There was actually a giant seal um, that they found bones of that was really interesting. Hyenas are actually much older. Their, um, their ancestors were around before, um, what became the modern hyena. Armadillos have been around for a lot longer than that. Giant sloths were not that new. Giant sloths have been around for a while. Um, what are they, Calicotheres? I believe it's Calicotheres. Uh, I believe they were way earlier, and they're actually relatives of giant sloths. Um, no, maybe it wasn't Calicotheres. I know there's, like, Do Dodrinimus or something, which is a huge sloth that was, like, 20 feet tall or something like that. Um, and they went extinct probably by man, or just by over-predation. Actually, a lot of species just disappeared, and this is a complete lie. Uh, Rodentia is fucking ancient. Um, sycamores are new. Early horses, like Eohippus, probably, because in this one is where you get, like, Morapus and the large camels... I believe so, yeah, because Eocene is the beginning of horses, like true horses, um, where you start seeing more tragulids, I believe they're called. I don't remember all of it. If I'm looking at it, I remember it. What's in here? Let's look at the Paleozoic. Cambrian period. Yeah, notably trilobites. And... Uh, uh, what is that called? Anomalocarids. Anomalocarids made their first big step right near the end of the period. Yeah. And that's when you got your first start with... I mean, technically you could say that if we were headed towards a next evolutionary jump, 
you would say that the next evolutionary jump would probably be something like squids, and then probably at some point in the future they'd probably be like dinosaurs and humans were a mistake and never should have happened, just because of land mass. I mean, technically, octopi are absolute geniuses. If they if they really knew how to put forth their brain power, they'd be a beast. And apparently they think with all parts of their body. Like, their tentacles have brain tissues in them, and so does other parts. So technically, if they get hurt, as long as they have, like, two tentacles, they can still live normally. Yeah, aminoids, early ones. And I believe it's in the... Yeah, Devonian is when you start getting early ones. Um, ah, oh, fuck. What are they called? Uh... Like lysenops, lycanops, something like that. Uh, it was an early, early one that came around this time, a little bit longer, and you start getting uh, Demetrodons and other famous ones. But uh, there was a whole bunch of weird shit that was in this this era. There was a gigantic um, newt-like creature that had these huge, like like bony cheeks and was apparently like very common yeah insects are actually much older we just uh, there are very few examples of insects on land <clears throat> because most of them didn't make it because they're so delicate <clears throat> yeah ginkgos ginkgos are awesome this is probably tremendously boring because it's boring me Archeon. Mm, that's probably debatable whether I was actually algae. You're probably looking more at those conical structures that uh, they think that these um, bacteriums that grow like coral that live on land, um, though they can live on land or in the water, they build these huge like basalt monoliths and huge... Uh, Oh, fuck, what is it called? Oh, God, why can't I remember? Either way, it's this big rock formations, and uh, they think that because of the abundance of them is the reason why we have so much solid earth crust, because they just they just were everywhere, and most of them just went extinct. Um, but they But some of them that are still alive grow very, very, very slowly. So before this... Pretty much those guys were out there building our continents, pretty much. Um, just with all the sediment and stuff that's put on top. Which is really interesting to think about. And actually, all of these guys that started it, they're like their huge filth layer of dirt and nastiness that was left behind is pretty much what allowed like plants and other things to grow. And then they kept dying on it and made all these layers of dirt. So, I mean, if you scraped away all the dirt on Earth, that would pretty much be what Earth looked like before it got there, and also took huge layers of, uh, like, rocky sediment and stuff like that. I mean, Earth was probably a whole fuck of a lot smaller um, back then, like, by a significant amount. I mean, if you think about it, it's, uh, if you think, you know, humans, you know, put off X many skin cells a day, and that's about how long average bacteriums last. Some can last a very long time, some can't last very long. If you consider that, f like, basically four billion years ago, if even, like, one bacterium that split into two and one of them died, and that process kept happening, but not every time, or they split into three and one of them always died um, before it got to replicate, that just that one alone would leave a huge pile of nastiness everywhere. So even that by itself would just leave all of its death behind, all of its dead behind. So you basically start creating this layer, and if you looked four billion years later, I mean, you'd have a fuck of a lot of bacteria and probably a lot more of them dying and complexity, but they would be this disgusting founding layer that starts all of this, um, all of, like, the later creatures. Because essentially, like, most of these bacteria and stuff can live on their own and eat inorganic matter directly, like rock, and, you know, take salt out of the water, or take, you know, 
like extant proteins in the water and then turn into something else. well not even proteins turning simplified stuff like there's a bacterium that turns rock into gold there's a bacterium i i think it's an arch or an archaeon or whatever they're called archaeons um and stuff like that that just turn things uh, turn one thing into another thing, pretty much. Um, I know that there's bacteriums that eat, like, uh, iron and stuff like that, and eat iron directly out of dirt and stuff like that, and then put out, you know, something else. But they die everywhere. So these things were the first things that were eating nothing alive. Essentially, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you would say that these are the most pure forms of life because they didn't feed on other creatures. They fed exclusively on, you know, a rock of some sort, you know, because that rock had that nutrient that they needed or had that mineral that they needed to keep their lifespan going uh, continually. And they never advanced very far because, first of all, it's hard to get to your dinner when it's covered in, you know, like an inch thick layer of dead things. Um, and second off, it's harder because you have to keep keep spreading and moving from place to place because eventually you're going to run out of that material. Like if there was something that ate only iron and became very efficient at eating iron, we wouldn't have any iron on our planet because they would have eaten it all, starved to death, and then that's it. It's not like there's new generation of iron coming out. Uh, it's not like rocks just appear out of nowhere and give us gold. There's always a reason why these things are here and eventually it will run out. And those things can't sustain a continued locomotion like that, especially not on a massive scale without being completely depleted. That's just, that's a rule of nature. Eventually, even if you had a creature that only ate salt out of salt water, eventually we would run out of salt and our oceans would be, you know, pure water. No, no, well, of course it'd be filled with dead things, but it wouldn't be salt water anymore, it would be fresh water. So then eventually they'd just all starve to death because there'd be no more salt to eat. And then we would never even know what salt was because whatever is eating it is, it's all gone. So it's really interesting how those things are so pure, but everything after that eats something that's dead or eats something that grows from something dead. And that's really interesting to say that at some point there there were creatures that did not eat each other at all, creatures that did not eat anything else. And at some point, whether starvation or fortune or whatever, something decided to eat another, whether it was living or dead. It was probably dead, and it probably ran out of whatever material it was eating in its local environment, so it started eating uh, other ones, and so on, and so on, and so on. And that one went on to become the successor that led everything after. You know, essentially things that just eat the dead, or eat things that <clears throat> come from the dead. So, plants essentially cannibalize their dead all the time, but we have such a thick layer of dirt that's filled with old nutrients and I'm pretty sure at one point there was a nutrient exchange, whereas in, like, spongiform um, early plants, when they all went extinct, that's probably where you saw the rise of other things, like, um, I mean, it's weird to think that there were no grasses a long time ago, that it was mostly just trees and large shrubs and plants that were really the only thing that lived. But before that, it was basically like mosses, lichens, stuff like that. So when they finished their digestive cycle and started suffering mass losses, then something else came and ate all of their dead, and then they leave their dead behind. So essentially they create this, this cycle. Um, and that's essentially what became the cycle of life. And without that start, I don't think any of us would have ever gotten started. So it's interesting to note that those are, as old as they are, that's really interesting. And I know this is a Game Boy game, and I'm talking about, you know, like, early bacterial life instead, but whenever I look at something educational, I think it's interesting. And this one is just a, this thing just seems to be like a cheap brush through of, uh, you know, what is and what isn't. I mean, if it had pictures, it might be a little better. There we go. I have to do that. But, uh, I do find this interesting. Um... Oh, so I guess it's just one long list? It's literally just just one... What the fuck? What the hell is this thing? It looks like a slider bar, but it's not working like that. See, there it's working like a slider bar. 
but <clears throat> yeah, rather interesting. I hate math, and I'll tell you why I hate math. There's a very good reason. I don't know why there. Was well, that's a tetrahedron? Five-sided tetra is four. So no, uh, I don't remember. Computing cube roots. Um. <clears throat> Decimals and percents are interesting. Um, let's do basic math. Oh, they don't do like, here's your numbers, bitch. Um, decimals is a good place to start. Mm. Fractions. Fuck fractions. Fractions are stupid. We shouldn't even use fractions anymore. Um... Here's here's the problem I have. <clears throat> if you say negative 10 to plus 10, and you take out all the factors, what happens is is that when you're counting up from 1 and then to 10, if you say, um, you know, okay, 10 is 10.0 infinitesimally. Well, anything below that is 9 essentially until you reach nine point zero 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 and then eight zero 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 and those are all uniform. They uniformly count up to uh let's let's just do nine. Nine point nine 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 infinitesimally is the maximum number before you reach ten. Um but when you go down and you say, okay, well two is where it starts and this like I don't know, it, it freaks me out when I think about it, is you you say one has a whole is uh, 1.0, or you say 2.0 is, is 2, 0, 0, 0, and then you say 1.9, which would be the next available one, and this is the problem I have with base 10, is that then you get to 1, and when you get to 1, the problem is, is that inherently it has everything above it, but does that mean that everything below it is 0? Because if it is, then 0 accumulates the largest portion of the numbers, because essentially it, it owns, in negative and positive, it has basically 0.99999 infinitesimally and negative 0.9 infinitesimally. So essentially in the 10, you're either saying that, that 1 takes essentially two blocks of what is a number and its size, wherever you say it's, you know, uh, 0. you know, crazy amount of zeros, 1, is the first number, the very first number. So you say it has a quantity, so it can't be 0. So, But if you go to 2, it's 1.99999 repeating. So, Or you can say, does it go to 0. 0.99999 repeating? So in that block, what are those numbers? Because they're not an individual digit, and they're not 0, but they do they cal qualify as 1? Or do they not qualify as one? And when you have it, if they are zero, then zero is in fact the largest percentage, the largest number essentially in terms of its space on a mathematical chart of numbers. It takes up the maximum amount of space you possibly. It takes up more space than any other existent number does. Um, or, I mean, anything below zero too. If you say it's all one, then one and negative one share the largest number gap. And therefore, those two are technically the largest numbers within the field. So, technically, does it does it make sense to do it that way, or is ten only count, or do you only count, you know, ten point zero 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 uh, infinite zeros one technically the first number, and ten by itself is technically a part of the nine point zero 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 one? Would that be technically the block. See, that's the problem is, is that neither of those make sense in order, essentially. That they're, they don't fit and they're not regular. So they're not, they, they just bother me. There's something about that that fundamentally bothers the out of me because it's, it's an unanswerable question because we have, we've set up a rigidity in numbers to try to explain things mathematically to have them make sense. But the problem is, is that they don't inherently make sense because of that gap. And that gap bothers me. I, I don't I've asked I've asked someone who was a math professor about it and he looked at me and was like I really have no answer for you 
And I was like, did I ask a stupid question? He's like, no, you didn't ask a stupid question. I just don't have an answer for you. So that's the, that's the closest I've ever come. I never talked to him again. But it was one of those things. He, he, he worked in math all of his life. So whether I questioned his ability to really fully calculate something or not is out there. I don't think he did. I think he probably just blew it off. But it, it bothers me because the, uh, essentially the number has more of a possession, I guess, is what's the problem. And if you're counting something, do you say, if you have point, if you have 0 0.23, would that qualify as a, a negative, less than something? But then when you insert something like fractions, it doesn't. It has a fract fractal amount. And then you put a 1 in front of it, so it's like saying it's that. So then you just say it's before the point, it's a 1. So then the fractions screw that up even further because, you know, essentially you're saying that something would be 3 fourths of 0 is the problem, you know, for 0.75. You'd be saying that that's 3 fourths of 0. And when you get down to more fundamental and smaller numbers, I think it, you, you see more and more distortion in that and how it's how it screws up things ultimately and that kind of thing bothers the living shit out of me and every time I was in math I would think about it nonstop and I thought about it when I was really young and I know it's esoteric but it just it bothered me that that's the way things were and like it's the same thing too when you do like zero divide like anything uh, divided by zero is what itself and then anything times zero is zero like that always bothered me because it doesn't it doesn't make sense why one times something is zero because if you already have the one you're saying that there's already an inherent possession of a single number which means you already have a one but if you do it times zero then it's zero but you still have that one that one is still a, a manifestation why would you calculate nine split up zero times technically or nine in zero times because you already say I already have nine of them but I need zero times them, wouldn't you still have the nine? I don't know. It, to me, it's it's one of those vague things, because if you're looking at it in a physical sense, if you say, I have three crayons, and you say, I'm going to give you times zero of them, there are still three crayons, so you're still left. I don't know. It bothers me. I'm not going to talk about it much more, because it's, it's bothering me. But, I don't know. And I think everybody should just switch to decimals, I, I think decimal is the most logical way to go. Like, fractions are fucking stupid, and whoever thought of them should never work in math again. And unfortunately, they're probably dead. And percents. Percents are stupid. And there's a very good read. Like, percents are good if you're measuring something as a whole. Yes, they're good, but on individual numbers, they're worthless. If you say everybody gets a flat tax of 15%, that makes sense. Or 10%, or whatever. So that's that's fine. That's because you're, you're fudging a number, essentially. You're saying that, like, well, we assume we'll take this much, so we'll take this much. But, uh... That way, it's it's balanced across several ones. So if you're looking at like you, you, basically, I think it should only be used in something that's average. But I hate when people are like, "Oh, like what's ten percent of a dollar?" Well, it's ten cents. But you know, that's that's kind of one of those silly things. And I think that really percents should only be taught as a larger scope item, not something you use, because all the rest you can use decimals for. You can you can convert a percent directly into a decimal a percent. Uh, you can convert a percent directly into decimals. I mean, technically, you could say that, you know, whatever it is. Uh, what's ten percent? I always forget. That's point point one. So you could just say, oh, the the tax is point one of everything you make, or point one zero of everything you make. So that way, you know, your you're getting it across without like changing it because especially when you're dealing with money it gets worse too like if you're using it as a broad scope term that's fine but i think that when you actually start doing it in the math i think it's pointless when you can just replace it with decimals i think that not enough people have enough def definition with decimals to really do it right and i see it all the time because i've worked retail and people don't know basic decimals <clears throat> and i understand that you're supposed to say you know, there are X many quarters, but, you know, you'll say someone like, oh, here's a quarter and 25 cents, and then they'll give you back like 75 cents, and they don't think about the quarter, or they don't, and because they're idiots, and 
this kind of thing happens like way too frequently or you get an awkward decimal that someone won't count to like you have 86 cents and someone will give you back you know or you have yeah you have 85 cents and someone will give you back a quarter not thinking and you can nickel and dime people for that quarter you can honestly be like no like and some people will believe you when you say that you know 25 cents out of 85 is correct and I I've seen it all the time people losing money over stupid shit like that and if people understood the decimals better and they didn't spend as much time teaching stupid fractions and didn't spend as much time teaching stupid percents maybe we could get along a little better and we could all not have as much problem with this kind of stuff because really fractions and decimals can both or fractions and percents can both be done with decimals and there's no point to pussyfoot around it why do we have archaic number systems that don't really help like it, I think it just adds more confusion. The decimal system is is you know just like the the metric system. It's simple because it's functional and easy to understand. Like it, you can do most decimal calculations right in your head. Like, but when you start saying percents and stuff, you, no matter what, when you put in the percent, you automatically have to convert that to decimal. Like when I said ten cents out of a dollar, I said okay, it, it's point one zero. So how much out of a dollar would that be? So I don't know. I think that that whole this whole category needs to, needs to die. Like fractions to percents and all that. Fuck out of here, bitches. Yeah, and powers. I've never understood powers. There, it that's just one of those like mathematical. I want to touch myself things. Like I'm so good at doing numbers by powers. Like I understand that it could be used for physics to say like it's this much of this number, but you know, oh, it's, you know, this to the power of three or whatever, you know, then then people can do calculations, so you can essentially shorthand bigger numbers. Um, that's nice and all, but I'm sure we can find a much better way to do it, because I remember in fucking 10th grade, we had to constantly do fucking powers, powers and square roots, powers and square roots, powers and square roots. It was fucking annoying non stop it my teacher had a boner for powers and hardcore had a teacher for power or for powers and for square roots and it was fucking pointless like honestly spending that year learning like advanced algebra and sensical things that can be used in the world is a lot better and rounding rounding is stupid that's another cheap ass fudging thing to do like oh yeah just round it down to whatever it's assumed use the fucking decimal if you have a whole, then there's no reason why you should have a decimal. If you do, then you just have to decide who you like better that you're going to give something more to. Or you have to say, this can't be divided up this way. You know, that cannot be squared that way. You you are an idiot for attempting it. And squaring, squaring is fucking... If someone can leave in the comments something that says that squaring is fucking useful, <clears throat> that's really been useful for them, then go ahead and leave it in the comments what profession and what what use this would have outside of repeatedly doing it in school. I, I dare you. I dare you to do it. Fucking stupid. Math over 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 complicated. I hate math. Like I'd honestly like chemistry uh, let's let's see US government. Let's just go to something else because math is making me angry. Government tar departments with websites Oh, the FCC, they're all our friends. Yeah, they're they're great. I like how really the FCC has been losing control and I think that as the reason why we pass these stupid laws like SOPA and CISPA and fucking stupid laws where people say you can do stuff on the internet and what you can and can't do on the internet. Like it, this is information exchange. You don't just say there's information that you can't exchange. You know, I understand if you use it to obtain emails from someone who used their email to find someone on MySpace who would do a contract killing or find someone that was e-stalking someone, you know, or something that that was a crime that manifests itself in reality. You know, when you start talking about imaginary crimes like transferring a data and this data is okay, but this data is not okay, 
then you start getting into imaginary crimes, which imaginary crimes are the same thing as saying you've dreamed about punching someone in the face, therefore you're going into an assault. Like, the, these things aren't really physical. They're written down in a physical way, but when you transmit it, it's a series of electronic blips, which aren't even negligible as a, as a real thing, other than we know what electricity does because it, it can do. But we can't, you know store these exact electrical pulses unless we have a hard media. So essentially in between those mediums you're trying to police these things and I think it's absolutely crazy. I mean the same thing could be said about communications but we can detect those and yes they they come through. So I feel that it's a very different thing than something on the internet. Um, but that's because we need so much translation to get one from the other. I mean I just think that there's a difference between it. And the FCC basically lost their control on the Internet because it's, you know, it's just the way it is. And so they create this new branch that's even more dumb than they are. And the FCC has made enough dumb mistakes as it is saying, you know, you can't do this. You need to rate movies. You need to, you know, rate video games. You need, you can't say a curse word. You can't fucking do this. You, you can't do this. You can't air this at this time. This is not okay. Um, and I understand that they do do other things, like they test, you know, radio and devices to make sure that they're not filling us full of radiation. But when they lost their control in the internet, they lost all their television. They lost their radio. And there are some people who still watch television and radio, but I think those are archaic. And I'm pretty sure the next generation will not give a fuck about broadcast radio or give a fuck about broadcast TV, because the internet has vastly shifted so many people. The next thing we're looking at is mass wireless media, where, you know, you can look at whatever you want. I mean, they lost out on cell phones, too. I mean, they lost a lot of things. And I just think that they're they're stupid, and they need to go away. Like, they've made their mistakes. Their era is over. They're done. I mean, if they want to come back in, that's fine, but they need to understand these guidelines. Like, I, I don't know. They're... I always thought the whole thing was kind of crazy. NASA. Talk about a way to stuff money. NASA still uses rockets that fly straight up. Even though, at the time that NASA was first starting to launch rockets, there was a person who suggested a way to create planes. And the reason why we used the straight up method had more to do with the fact is we didn't want a plane that was flying up and made it look easy and simple and wasn't dramatic and something that other countries couldn't copy that easy. We were still running on this rocket technology when we could have taken a B-52 bomber with a little light plane that could go into the upper atmospheres or even if it had a fucking balloon on it for god's sakes a hydrogen balloon you could have gone up and gone into space you can do this today very easily and very cheaply but for some reason they think it's a really good idea to shoot things up at the worst angle against gravity not using wind shear to push you aside it's essentially like instead of cutting your sandwich you basically take the side of your hand and you keep chopping your sandwich until it smashes apart. Like, that's essentially the, the NASA idea, is just keep chopping at it. And it's really stupid. And to make it worse is, is that, yes, they did do some good things, like send out probes and stuff like that, but they, they never invested in technologies that would really take them farther. And our most notable thing is a cook pan ingredient, Teflon. And, uh... Kevlar, which stops bullets, which they've already proven other materials can stop them much better, and the freaking stuff that you put on your pan that prevents you from sticking can fucking kill you if you scrub it. Like, nothing that great came out of it. And they, we spent billions of dollars into these, and we had, other than knowing a little bit more about our galaxy, about our solar system, we didn't really get that much out of it. And it's all because we were slamming, basically chopping that sandwich, hoping that at some point it'll come through. Oh, and the other thing FCC does is, is they monitor certain parts of computers and other electronics to make sure that they don't have hazardous signals or leave out excessive electromagnetic radiation and things like that. <clears throat> National Endowment for the Arts. Yeah, okay. The Humanities, a.k.a. anyone who has a philosophy degree. 
they need to go somewhere. National Science Foundation, which is pretty much, you know, gives out grants and does some pretty cool stuff, but uh, they're they're tied down with so much. Yeah, nobody cares about these people. The Department of the Interior, yeah, they did a really good job recently. Yeah, I I like how the Department of the Interior allows like hobo camps and stuff like that and allows a lot of people to exploit a lot of things they have and same thing with health and human services but that's a whole another another thing and department of agriculture has constantly been an in pocket like grow this throw this out nope you can't grow this this season no we don't want you to do this oh there's a drought oh. they're more like one long thing that's a shitty American flag. One long thing to basically harass farmers or tell farmers to join into bigger like company unions. It's been a it's been a disaster, a lot of things they've done. And they've let people get away with such stupid stuff, but then, you know <coughs> they let companies get away with these terrible things. And then an average farmer does something that's barely notable and they completely screw them over. Fuck you, mathematics. Oh, computer basics. I guess it's supposed to teach people what's that. Oh, let's look what's inside our computer. There are wire, wires and cables running all over the place. Yeah, if you have a shitty put together. Flat metal boxes and something that sometimes make grinding noises. Not if you have a solid state. <laughs> AGP. Oh, God. I remember having AGP. Because AGP is the old pre... Dude, I can't think today. My brain is, like, fried. Um, I like how they have case. Um, PCI. They're the old PCI slots. CMOS. Fan. Floppy drive. Honestly, floppy drives are just disappearing. Like, we just have... I mean, we don't have floppy drives anymore, really. But uh, even CD drives, I mean... It's coming to the point where it's better off if companies just release things on, like, a... Like, I wish that Windows would just have a flash chip that you put in your computer, and then it's basically a backup if something goes wrong with your computer and you can take it out, but if you put it in, it does all this diagnostics and stuff, so that way you don't have to worry about having your CD or all that, and it has all of your information in there, or you, you know, it is your operating system, and when you plug it in, it works, and that's it, and then you have, like, essentially, like, a backup that's on your hard disk, but it, it, it's only the base files are put on this flash drive, it can't be written to, or anything like that that it's just it's just your basic to get everything running so that way if you have a virus or you have a crash or you you know replace your motherboard you don't have to or you replace your hard drive you don't have to reinstall um, and plus it would be a whole fuck of a lot faster than fucking CD DVD because I fucking hate waiting for that shit to start IDE controllers they're pretty much dying we're pretty much left with SATA now but yeah heat sink keyboard port you mean USB drive keyboard my my de my uh no mine still has a keyboard port one of the old PS slash twos hmm that's weird it has a mouse one too but uh I think my old one didn't actually I think it only had USBs I mean I, everything's USB now microprocessor modem <laughs> silly I'm waiting for the for the day that there's no more modems that that kind of disappears Motherboard, mouse port, parallel ports. I don't think I have any parallel ports on my computer. Let me look. No, I don't. I don't have any parallel ports. PCI. Oh, there we go. PCI expansion slot. There we go. Real-time clock. No way. Removable drive. Sound card. Onboard sound card is the way to go. I bought sound cards, and sound cards nowadays are the biggest pieces of shit in the planet. Half of them don't work, and when you buy a halfway decent one, there's little to no difference between an onboard sound card. My onboard sound card 
was better. I got the sign card for free, and I don't use it. It's a piece of shit. And it's like uh, it's supposed to be all the surround sound and shit, and I hooked it up to my receiver, and only it only plays out of three speakers. I even went and got a piece of surround sound. I got a surround sound movie, and I uh, burned it to my computer, and then I went to play it with the surround sound options in, I think, VLC or Windows Media Player, one of them. And I went to play it, and it only came out of the front three speakers. And I checked my settings on my receiver, and it was fine. But basically, it doesn't. the sound card did not put out a 5.1 surround sound like it was supposed to. It sucked it up. And then I plugged my, my regular sound card on my motherboard, and it was better. And I was like, that's fucking embarrassing. USB ports. Tape drive. Why do you even put a tape drive on there? Nobody has tape drives anymore. I don't think I, I had, uh, yeah, I had one tape drive, and that was on a, on a really old laptop, a really old laptop. It only had a, uh, was it five and a half, five and three quarters, something like that, five, yeah, whatever, one of those discs. Um, it had one of those in there, which I never understood why they didn't just make them five inches, but uh, it had one of those in there, and that was, and it had a tape drive. And I was like, what the fuck? I'd never seen a <clears throat> tape drive before. <clears throat> but that that one barely worked. It had like a shitty thing, how circuit boards work. Turning on the power. Let's see. I really got to see this. Whoa, power switch. You got to turn it on. Wow. Before that, your computer is ready to process information. Power on self-test. Your operating system. Let's see what it says. See, it's weird, because, like, technically, like, even though I have um, Windows 7, I still have a DOS backup. I I put a, I specifically put a DOS. I'm able to, like, if I restart my computer, I can go into a DOS prompt, um, because I like having DOS in case shit really hits the fan. It's really nice to have a backup because DOS will still run the things. Because if Windows 7 crashes, there's a good chance you can't get anything back. When my when that happened to my uh, laptop, they asked, like, one of the things was, it was like, does it have a DOS mainframe? And my netbook does not have any DOS at all, other than run, obviously. But um, it has no DOS at all, so I couldn't go back and, like, retrieve archive and look at logs and stuff like that. So, um... But this computer, when it crashed, I was able to go into DOS and I was able to activate my CD drive and then install, reinstall Windows by formatting drive and still be able to take it and uh, it and be able to move stuff onto um, Medium so I could save stuff that I wanted before the format. So, yeah. So programs like Windows 98 and OS 2 were created. Yeah, I think you're looking a little ahead of yourself. Um, Windows 3.1 was probably, as far as I can recall, that is the earliest form. So, yeah. I knew a lot, like a long time ago, people would have to write a program just to get the computer started um, because they were primitive back then. Drivers, half of the reason why Windows crashes. My netbook driver, um, Windows says it's a bad driver, and I installed it directly from the company that makes it, and it's a wireless driver. And I put in this wireless driver, and it works fine. Like, the company says it will 100% work on this net, on this notebook, and it's the same one they've been using for a year. And uh, they haven't had any updates on it. They said that there was a problem where you could lose, you could suddenly drop out connection, and you wouldn't be able to connect to anything for like, you know, unless you restarted your computer or whatever. And I was getting that issue, so I, I restarted and got back in, and then looked for the new driver, got the driver, and now it's like, whoa, this driver is not compatible with the Windows 7. But netbooks and this driver are certified by Microsoft as a valid driver. <laughs> And it only works on my on my and the model up and the model down drivers uh, for my netbook. That's specifically what this driver is for. And Windows is like, whoa, like this may be the incorrect driver. Driver is not working properly, like all the time. And it's really stupid because it'll be like, this driver cannot work, or this driver is not working, or it failed to work. And 
my internet still works. So every once in a while I get these pop-ups that are like, whoa, driver doesn't work, and it's like flipping the fuck out. <laughs> and it's like, no, it works. You're just being a dumbass. Or like, oh, God, it's so annoying. Um, same thing with my NVIDIA card. Sometimes Windows pops up and it's like, like, whoa, this driver doesn't work. And then they'll, then it'll turn off my graphics card and everything will get all shrunk on my screen. And I'm like, oh, fucking come on. So I reset the driver <clears throat> through my uh, NVIDIA control panel and then it works. But sometimes Windows, even when I reset it, will be like, whoa, this driver doesn't work. And then I try it again and it's like, driver works. Then I don't have a problem as long as my computer's running. And then when I turn it off, it'll it'll be fine. But then like two weeks from now, it'll randomly just be like, nope, I'm not working anymore. Fuck you. So, yeah. Fuck Windows. I wish somebody else would just come out with something else. Whoa, let's see what it says about the internet. <laughs> I like that. In the late 1950s, the Cold War between the U.S. and Soviet Union was bad. Really bad. The Russians got into space where the U.S. did? What, you mean Sputnik? Pfft. They didn't send a per. Well, actually, I think they sent a person up first. No. I think we did it first. Yeah, actually, the U.S. had also had its technological prowess shaken when they discovered rocket power that Russia also stole after post-World War II, and when they found out all the things that uh, the Nazis had created, like helicopters, um, jet planes, like true jet planes, like modern planes, and all this other stuff. Um, the first ICBM... I don't know what they're talking about with this. America's technological prowess all through World War One to World War Two had basically been absolutely embarrassed. I mean, we got through World War Two by brute force. Not, I mean, it, until the creation of the the atomic bomb, which was like the one thing we did that was above and beyond everybody else, until the Rosenbergs. Um, I mean. Uh, we were behind in rockets, we were behind in planes, we were behind in ships, we were behind in tank manufacturing. I mean, there was nothing that we did at the beginning of World War II that was better than any other country. We were about on par, and the Nazis took it to a whole new level. And Russia, because of being in proximity and their, their stealing from the Nazis, got half of this technology and did a lot better. But when we got our hands on the technology and reverse engineered it, we did the things to make it even better. We built bigger tanks that could fire farther. We had rifles that were built better and could shoot farther. Because we wanted that extra step. And we got it because we worked at it. And we needed theirs to really show what it what it takes. And, uh, I mean, we essentially won because of Normandy. And then we pretty much had destroyed Germany once we got that foothold. And then that foothold and the fact that Germany was already dealing with wars on every other front and had been dealing with Russia, they were essentially a weakened force. So we won because of that. And then the building of the nuclear bomb wasn't like an overnight thing. It took a long time, and we had to take a lot of scientists from other countries who were fleeing Germany and Europe to get away from it, who without them, we would have never made the atomic bomb. I mean, uh, even in the space race, we were still kind of embarrassed. Like, I, I, people always really do that. Yeah, U.S. communications was horrible. Russia had, like, a direct tap into it for a very long time. I think it wasn't until, like, the 70s or 60s, late 60s, when we figured out that Russia could basically listen to everything that we were doing, and we had no clue what they were doing. Oh, well, there's an end in sight. In the 90s, pretty much, that bubble burst. Yeah. I mean, now, with the internet and stuff, it's it's boomed again, but... <clears throat> oh, let's see the multimedia. And I've gone on way too long with this. CD-ROM and DVD. Multimedia sound? No way. Multimedia video? Let's look at it. Whoa! Camera and microphone capture images and sounds. Oh my god, I wish I had a computer that could capture images and sounds. That's so cool. I didn't know that they were this advanced. Yes, a file this type is known as an AVI file. I don't make AVI files anymore. I, I, Other than porn, I don't think I get anything in AVI, and I convert those shits because AVIs are too big. It's 
Yep. Well, you don't really need to change digital signals to analog anymore. Um, because, well, except for sound, because you still have speakers that are analog. You don't have digital speakers unless you have a really nice kit. But, uh, yeah, most people have digital monitors, so it's digital to digital. Analog is disappearing slowly. <clears throat> Not soon enough. Oh, let's look at geography. Let's see. Oh, it has Pangea. But you don't have Gondwana land. Or no, Gon Gondwana land. You don't have that. Disappointing. Let's let's look at African countries real quick. Let's see which ones aren't countries anymore. Angola, Benin, Botswana, Burkina Faso, Burundi. Yeah, Burundi's a dump. Chad, Comoros, Congo Republic. Oh no, it's actually pretty li pretty new. Guinea, Ghana, Guinea. Yeah, most of these are pretty kosher. I knew a guy who was Tunisian. He was really nice. Just looking at that. Liberia! But you didn't know this. Technically, it's American state. Yep. Technically, we own Liberia. Let's look at Burundi. The number one poorest country in the world. Population, 5 million. They don't use the franc anymore. I'm pretty sure they use something completely different. Yeah, Swahili. Roman Catholic. Capital city, Bujumbura. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On that note, I think that's going to be all for Let's Play whatever something professor let's look at the top content guide volume one is there a second volume let's go back to the main menu okay well this is apparently the main menu that's all for whatever this is notes something or other gba some game that probably never sold with me morak dice see you later